good evening and thank you for all those uh, uh, who are still here after a long, very interesting day. So the topic that I'm going to speak about is responses to CAR T-cell therapy in multiple myeloma, and we're going to focus on BCMA-directed CAR T-cells, where there's most of the data in the last five or so years. Uh, these are my disclosures. So this is, uh, I think, by now familiar to almost everybody here in the audience. Uh, structure of a CAR T cell, it has a antigen-recognizing domain, the SCFE, that recognizes the target. In the case of myeloma, uh, we're going to focus mostly on BCMA-directed CAR T cells, although there are other targets in CAR T cells that are coming to the clinical trials. Uh, and this is a co-stimulatory uh, domain in uh, CD28 shown here. The other commonly used co-stimulatory domain is 41BB, as well as a signaling domain, CD3 Zeta. And this is the, the general structure of most CAR T cells that are in clinical trials currently. Uh, specific CAR T cells may vary based on the SCFE. There's several different choices for each antigen. It may vary on co-stimulatory domain, as I mentioned, CD28 or 41BB. Uh, and there are other... Um, uh, differences in terms of manufacturing, other tweaks that can be done. At this point, there are no head-to-head -head comparisons of different CAR T cells for multiple myeloma. So what each of these modifications bring to the table in terms of safety or efficacy have not been directly compared. Uh, this is yet another way of looking at it. Uh, so in terms of targeting myeloma with CAR T cells, the earliest uh, clinical data comes from using CD19 CAR T cells. This was from the UPenn group. Uh, uh, Al Fall and colleagues uh, published this uh, four years back in the New England Journal, the first patient that was treated with CD19 directed CAR T cells. Uh, this is a patient with relapsed and refractory multiple myeloma. So the rationale for targeting CD19 in multiple myeloma um, uh, some myeloma cells express low levels of CD19. Uh, myeloma uh, and so-called myeloma precursor cells. Uh, there's a, a regulatory B cells in the microenvironment that express CD19. And I think most importantly, there was a CD19 CAR T cells available. So it made sense, uh, based on these rationale, to use CD19 CAR T cells in the setting while we waited for other targets and CAR T cells to become available. So this first patient... Uh, <clears throat> received CAR T cells, uh, CD19 CAR T cell in context of a second autologous transplant. So this was not just CD19 CAR T cells alone, but uh, followed then by, uh, uh, preceded by a second autologous transplant. And, uh, and since then, 12 patients have been treated, but the, this patient had what was called as a remission inversion. This refers to the duration of uh, a remission after the second transplant, uh, which is expected to be much shorter than the first transplant based on what we know about um, uh, melphalan and, and second transplants in multiple myeloma. And this patient had a significantly longer duration of remission after the second transplant, which suggested that perhaps the CD19 CAR T cells uh, added to the efficacy of the second transplant. So since then, this is also now published. Uh, 10 patients have received uh, CD19 CAR T cells in the context of second transplant in the study at UPenn. And two out of the 10 patients had uh, this so-called remission inversion, including that first patient that I showed and a second patient. The other patients really did not have this emission inversion. So it's an open question if CD and CD19 CAR T cells have efficacy. The PEN group is now looking at it uh, in combination with BCMA-directed CAR T cells in high-risk patients up front, and that'll be interesting to see what the CD19 CAR T cells bring to table in that setting. So uh, moving on from CD19 CAR T cells, there are several different targets that people have evaluated in the lab and now in clinic as well. The one that really stands out and has, has been now tested in more than a dozen different clinical trials, early phase clinical trials of uh, CAR T cells is the BCMA B cell maturation antigen. Uh, again, the first patient was treated at NCI uh, more than five, nearly five years back now, and since then, like I said, maybe a dozen or more clinical trials ongoing here in the US and, and outside. So this is the preclinical work from Jim Kokenderfer's lab in, uh, at the NCI uh, looking at BCMA as a target. Uh, so the reason BCMA was picked was it is uh, expressed at high levels in many, if not all, patients with relapsed and refractory multiple myeloma and very little to no expression in other cells except for mature B cells and plasma cells. This is work uh, from my colleague Eric Smith in the lab uh, looking at mouse models, uh, xenograft models of multiple myeloma that were treated with CD19 or uh, BCMA-directed CAR T cells using one of five different SCFEs. And as shown here, uh, the mice that were treated with CD19-directed CAR T cells uh, at least uh, did not seem to have much of a response. Uh, and two uh, out of these different SCFEs really had the best pharmacokinetic and, and 
and clinical profiles in the mouse, and both of these uh, BCMA-directed uh, CAR T cells are now in um, clinical trials. So as I mentioned, there's several, I think since we made this slide, several more CAR T cells for BCMA-directed CAR T cells are now available, but this is uh, about 11 or 12 different CAR T cells that are, have been in clinical trials for the last five or so years. These are all BCMA-directed CAR T cells. They differ, uh, like I met, mentioned earlier on, in terms of SCFE. Some of them have murine SCFE, some human, some actually have LAMA. Uh, they also differ in terms of co-stimulatory domain CD28 versus 41BB. Uh, there's also differences in manufacturing for some of these products products, and they're all currently in phase one or two trials, and some of them have early results as well. So this is uh, from the New England Journal a couple of months back, uh, looking at the initial experience and results from BB21, uh, BB2121, which is a anti-BCMA CAR T cell therapy in patients with relapse and refractory multiple myeloma. This is a phase one study that was run here in the U.S. Uh, <clears throat> This is the consort diagram from the study. There were 36 patients enrolled in the study uh, and 33 patients that were treated. Three patients, unfortunately, couldn't make it to the treatment phase because of the, I, presumably because of rapid progression of disease um, while uh, waiting for the cells to be ready. Of these 33 patients reported, 21 patients were treated in the dose escalation phase and 12 patients in the dose expansion phase. The dose escalation phase had four different dose levels. Uh, the lowest dose was 50 million, a flat dose of 50 million cells, and subsequent patients were treated at 150, 450, and uh, uh, three patients at the 800 million dose level. Uh, the dose expansion phase was uh, uh, patients were treated between 150 and 450 million. So this is uh, the baseline uh, characteristics. This is uh, typical for a pretty heavily pretreated uh, patient population. The median number of line, lines of therapy was about six uh, prior lines of therapy. Uh, about 30% of patients had extramedullary disease. Uh, nearly half of the patients had high risk cytogenetics. Uh, all patients had, or most patients had exposure to uh, bortezomib, carfilzomib, lenalidomide, palmalidomide, and daratumumab, although there were a few patients in the those expansion phase that did not receive prior CD38 therapies, but met the majority had. Uh, so this is the, looking at the responses. Patients that were treated at the first dose level, which is 50 million, and there were three patients, really had modest to no responses. One patient who had a PR, but all three patients progressed fairly quickly. So this was quickly determined to be an ineffective dose. If you look at the higher doses, the 30 patients that were treated at 150 million or higher, uh, there was uh, good responses, and including deep responses in almost all dose levels. The overall response rate was 85%, with nearly half of the patients, I think 45% of patients, achieving a CR or stringent complete response. As a point of reference, this, I would point out that in studies of single agent daratumumab, uh, the early studies, the response rate was about 30%, and the CR rate was about 15%. If you looked at a combination like daratumumab, pomalidomide, and dexamethasone in advanced myeloma, the CR rate is probably about 10 to 15 percent. So in this setting, uh, seeing a response of about 80 to 85 percent or higher, uh, including deep responses, uh, CR, stringent CR, MRD negative CR is certainly quite encouraging. So this is uh, the swimmer's lane plot uh, for this study, uh, and a couple of things to point out. Uh, patients are MRD negative fairly early. The yellow stars here indicate MRD negativity. This is MRD negative by bone marrow only. So many of these patients, some of these patients are in PR or VGPR at the time of MRD assessment. And as you can see, with time, the responses deepen. Uh, so for instance, this patient was a PR here all the way up to six months and then subsequently converted to very good partial response with ongoing responses at 18 and 20 months. Uh, so there's early response in terms of free light chains, in terms of bone marrow clearance, but the paraprotein, particularly the M spikes, can take quite a while to disappear in some patients up to 12 to 18 months before they achieve a, a complete response by IMWG criteria. So this is, I think, the other important slide, which is progression-free survival. Uh, the progression-free survival for the 30 patients that were treated at the effective doses, which is 150 million or higher, was 11.7 months, um, a little under one year. Uh, it was obviously pretty short for the patients, the three patients that received 50 million or lower the ineffective dose. Uh, this is looking at uh, expansion of CAR T cells at different doses. The peak expansion was, sorry. The peak expansion was fairly comparable across the higher doses of 150, 450, and, um, and 800 uh, million. And 
the persistence is variable. I have another slide looking at persistence is what we'll come to. So this is MRD negativity uh, in patients that were had uh, uh, MRD assessments done at one and three months, uh, and there were 16 patients with adequate samples to look for MRD, um, and all 16 patients were MRD negative using the, the adaptive next generation sequencing panel at one or three months. Um, <clears throat> suggesting a deep and early clearance of the bone marrow in these patients. Uh, and the PFS for these 16 patients was about 17 and a half months, uh, so about one and a half years of PFS for the 70, 16 patients who achieved uh, MRD negativity after CAR T cell therapy. Uh, this is from a poster from Dr. Munshi a couple of years back, um, looking at the, the response at one month and uh, the best response for patients who have um, uh, MRD negativity, the 16 patients who have MRD negativity. As shown here, some of the patients at initial, although they're MRD negative, by serology are still only stable disease, uh, and only five patients had a, a complete response or stringent complete response at the time of MRD negativity. That number eventually gets to 11, so there's, again, similar to the swimmer's lane, there's a deepening of responses with time, and it takes a while before patients are VGPR or CR with, uh, with BCMA-directed CAR T-cells and in BB2121. So this is the PFS light for the MRD negative patients, the 16 patients, 17.7 uh, months. Uh, looking at CAR T cell persistence over time, uh, there were uh, 33 patients included, and uh, most patients um, had uh, detectable CAR T cells, obviously, at one month. Out at 12 months, there were only 10 patients who were evaluated, and two out of the 10 patients had persistent low levels of CAR T cells um, on this study. So this is a different study, that one that we, we were associated with. This is the JCARH125, which is a Juno cell gene CAR T cell in a similar patient population with um, a relapsed and refractory multiple myeloma. And again, the overall response rate across dose levels and uh, similar dose, doses of 150, 150, and 450 million. We saw an overall response rate of about 82% with 48% of patients achieving a VGPR or better. Notable here is uh, that patients treated at the lowest dose level of 50 million also had responses including uh, CRs and stringent complete responses including MRD negativity. And the, the follow-up at the time of reporting was fairly short. The median follow-up was about 11 weeks. Um, so this is the swimmer's lane plot for the 14 patients treated at the, at the lowest dose level, the first dose level of um, uh, 50 million, and uh, six out of the nine patients who were evaluable were MRD negative, 10 to the power of minus five, using uh, the adaptive next generation sequencing panel. And similar to the experience with BB2121, we do see deepening of responses with time, with uh, uh, initial uh, partial responses and VGPRs that over time convert to CRs in at least some patients. Uh, so I'm not summarizing the results from all of the studies, but a few key studies that are currently going on as multi-center phase 1-2 trials uh, here in the U.S., uh, including BB2121, JCARH125, the LCAR B38M, which is the, 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 the legend study from China that's currently being run here in the U.S. by Janssen, uh, as well as the Poseida study. And as you can see, the doses are variable, uh, but the responses are fairly comparable. The overall response rate is anywhere from 60 to 90 percent in, in these uh, patients with relapse and refractory multiple myeloma. The CR rates are uh, a VGPR or better is somewhere between 25 to 75 percent of patients achieve a very good partial response or better. The PFS has not really been reported in some of the studies where there is reports uh, that is two of these studies, BB2121 was 11.8 months the LCAR uh, legend study was about 15 months. Uh, to note, the LCAR study was done in China. Many of these patients had fewer lines of treatment. Uh, only one out of the, all of these patients received daratumumab, slightly different population, so it would be interesting to see how this product um, uh, uh, looks in a, in a more contemporary U.S. patient population, and we should hear that hopefully soon. Uh, the CR rates and neurotoxicity are seen mostly manageable in all of these studies. The CR, a high proportion of patients have uh, CRs, and again, across these studies, most of these uh, CRS is grade one or two CRS with a few uh, grade three or higher events. Uh, and the rates of neurotoxicity, again, is, uh, is relatively low, and serious neurotoxicity that is grade three or higher is uncommon, although we'll hear more about it from Deepu, I think. So I just wanted to, uh, this is one of our patients, one of our patients we treated uh, four years back, one of, our, uh, uh, one of the first patients we treated with CAR T cells, uh, MCARH171, which I didn't talk about here. Um, a very advanced multiple myeloma, refractory to last lines of treatment when we treated her. This was a PET scan at baseline, extensive bone-based and extramedullary disease um, uh, with rapid progression when she came to 
to the trial. Uh, she barely was eligible to receive the T cells, uh, which she did. Uh, and this is her PET scan uh, two months later with a, a complete metabolic response. And uh, she had a VGPR by virtue of having a small M spike uh, that was detectable at the time of this PET scan. She went on to have ongoing response for about nine months and unfortunately progressed at that point with, um, with more disease and, 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 uh, and had to receive other treatments since. So those responses are obviously uh, uh, very impressive and encouraging, but we come back to this slide, which is the PFS. About 12 months, although we do see high rates of responses and deep responses, uh, the durability of response is still something that we need to work on. And I just wanted to finish with this one slide, looking at, uh, at what we're doing, what we're excited about at MSKCC, uh, looking for other targets, newer targets, either uh, by themselves or in combination with BCMA-directed CAR T cells. So this is work from Eric Smith in the lab, uh, looking at GPRC5D, uh, which is a target that's present in uh, plasma cells. This is uh, primary patient samples, looking at CD138 positive cells that express both BCMA and uh, GPRC5D uh, expression, and this is, uh, Mouse experiments looking at uh, recapitulating, uh, I guess, in vivo resistance to BCMA-directed T cells. Uh, these are mice, uh, mouse models with OPM2 cell lines. 25% of the cells have um, knockout of BCMA, so 75% of the cells express both BCMA and GPRC5D. 25% of the cells have GPRC5D alone with a knockout of BCMA. So these mice are then treated with CD19 CAR T cells and uh, two batches of mice treated with BCMA-directed CAR T cells. And at the time of relapse, uh, these patients are treated again with a second dose of BCMA CAR T cell and uh, a second or a, a dose of GPRC5D. And as you can imagine, these patients, uh, these mice uh, who relapsed after initial BCMA-directed therapy uh, do not uh, really respond to BCMA-directed CAR T cells because they're most, mostly GPRC5D uh, expressing myeloma cells, but they do respond to GPRC5D-directed CAR T cells. So this is... Um, in advanced stages of coming to clinic, hopefully soon uh, using a GPRC-directed CAR T cells in patients with relapsed and refractory multiple myeloma, and will include patients uh, who have received prior BCMA therapies, including prior BCMA CAR T cells. So I want to thank the Cellular Therapeutic Center and my colleagues at uh, MSKCC in the myeloma service and the BMT service. Uh, thank you very much.